Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, man. We are at a, a VRBO or a home away from home uh, here at Smith Lake in Alabama, stage three of the, of the Bass Pro Tour. Uh, so you guys will be seeing this, the event will be over. I, I fished my first day uh, sitting in seventh, so I, I compete again tomorrow. Uh, got my fingers crossed that we can uh, catch a bunch, make the knockout round, and eventually make the championship round. But with that said, it's that time of the month. We're getting back to, you know, the Optimus sponsored Where to Start. It's just a great video series that I try to break down three lakes for you guys, you know, and uh, I go through all the comments. I read a lot of the lakes. I, re I read everything that you guys say. And uh, I've got three really cool lakes picked out for the month of March. And we'll go into April a little bit because this video's a little late in the coming uh, of March. So, uh, uh, we'll go into the first few weeks of April too on these lakes. Uh, with that said, let's, let's talk about a few newsworthy items. Um, you know, you're watching this the very next week or the week after, uh, is Red Crest at Grand. And you know, like it's going to be a really, really neat event. I'm going to have a, a booth at the Red Crest that there's going to be a Optima batteries going to have a stage where all the pro anglers that aren't fishing are going to be doing seminars and it's all free. It's, just, it's going to be a really neat event. So if you guys are in the area or you know somebody in the area, come out to Redcrest. It's all free. Lots of stuff going on. They're going to fly the top 10 guys every day uh, back to the, uh, the uh, expo in a helicopter, which will be kind of interesting. I, I've never been in a helicopter, so hopefully I'm in that helicopter, you know, and, and in the top 10 each day. But uh, the dates on that, just for so you know, let me look that up just so I'm correct right here. Um, I've got the dates for it. it. We start on the 23rd. The expo starts on the 25th. That's the Tulsa State Fairgrounds, the 25th, 26th, and 27th of March. Everything happens at Grand Lake. Uh, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Um, and with that, also in my booth, I've got some new hats. I've got these new Project E hats. I've got some new shirts. Um, we haven't launched them on the website yet. We're going to launch them at the Red Crest, and then we'll put them on the website for everybody if anybody's interested. Uh, but, all right, back to where to start. Let's get the winner out of the way. Man, I'm excited for you. Here we go. The winner is R. Hanlon, H-A-N-L-O-N. My camera guy says you've been a subscriber. Um, you said I love getting the videos and advice from pros like Edwin. It's awesome. So, Ron. All you got to do is send me an email through my website. Just go over to my website. There's a little form you can fill out. Send me an email and I will send you a battery certificate through the email. Uh, Optima actually will. So congratulations. You won a battery of your choice or certificate. Uh, thanks a lot for leaving that comment. Thanks a lot for being a loyal subscriber. And uh, if you didn't win, next month. We'll do this all over again next month. So let's get to the lakes. What lakes are we going to break down? I've I am, I've got three lakes here. I went through all the comments. Man, I had lots of great comments. I've got one guy that keeps commenting about Shasta out in California. And, and uh, man, I, I got to kind of stay in my wheelhouse. I, I would be, I, I mean, I guess I could always say where I would start, but I'd be a little afraid that you might laugh at me because I don't always know, I don't know a whole lot about California. So I got to kind of stay in my wheelhouse, but I'm going to try it. I will try it one of these months. The first lake that I want to do is Eufaula, Oklahoma. We had a lot of comments this month on you follow some of them here. Oh, I know Patrick Sanchez. He keeps saying you follow every month. I had, uh, um, I had quite a few people. I, I'd have to go back through. I just took screenshots of them all. Who else said something about it? Uh, I had a lot of comments for, for you follow Oklahoma, not now in Alabama. Um, I had a lot of comments for Lewis Smith Lake, the lake that's right out this window. I thought, what the heck? I'm here right now. That would be a great lake to break down. And then, uh, man, just one of the all-time best lakes in the country. And, and, I, and I think I've broke it down before, but it's a fun lake to break down. Sam Rayburn over in East Texas. Uh, you know, the month of March and April is like the most popular, best months to ever be there. Um, I think Sealy has a big bass, big bass tournament over there. So let's kind of break it down. If, if I was going over there to try to catch a big bass for that tournament, uh, it's a really, really cool tournament. They give away tons of trucks and boats and campers and everything else. So those are the three lakes. I kind of spilt the beans. I've named the winner. I've told you the lake. So let's get off in them. Let's start right here with Lake Eufaula, Oklahoma. Man, this lake's super dear to my heart. Um, I used to compete on this lake all the time in March and April were my best months. Like I had a lot, a lot of success 
on Eufaula, Oklahoma uh, back in the day. I just did. Um, so the things that, that, I, that you've got to keep in mind, the things that you need to think of when you go there is water clarity. Like if it's still cold, like if we if March ends up being cold, you know, right now we're in a warm spell, but if we have a few cold weeks and that water's still, you know, low 50s, seek out the cleanest water. You know, that's one thing about you fall, it can get muddy, can get dirty. We haven't had a lot of rain in Oklahoma right now, but you know, if you're watching this maybe next year, you know, and it, it is a rainy year, seek out the cleanest water. And always the cleanest water on the lake is down at Forum Landing. Uh, you know, that's this area right here. If I was to zoom out a little bit, you know, it's that area right here. Just that, you know, all the water goes out the dam right there, but this is a, a really, and to circle it a little further, it'd be this area, like the entrance of it. That, that's like a, a clean water area. Uh, number nine landing. Um, this area right here, that's always been a, a historically clean water area. Uh, Brook and Cove historically has been a clean water area. You know, those three, if we're just to narrow it down, I'd almost have to say those areas have the most amount of fish because it has the best water quality. It has the best spawns each year. Um, I'm not saying those are the only areas to fish in the lake as far as, you know, when the water gets muddy, you know, I'll find some little hidey holes, you know, uh, some creeks and this kind of stuff, you know, to, to you know, like the triangle right here. Um, you know, it's got good spawning flats in it. It can be really good. You know, you can run way south and get in a few of those creeks and, and certain times, certain years, you know, you can catch a big, big stringer out of there. That, but that's really, really rolling the dice. Day in, day out, if I had to pick a place to start, that's the name of our video, sponsored by Optima. If I had to pick a place to start, let, I would say number nine marina, or number nine landing, just, and that's a big area. I don't know the name of that creek. Um, you know, you got this marina right here, this pocket right here, man, it's just a good pocket. It faces back to the north. It's really, really well protected. You'll see when you come in this pocket, you've got uh, some channel uh, rock changes right here on the left, you know, big rocks. The sun's gonna be hitting that comes across in the southern hemisphere, you know, that's just gonna be a good spot for fish to stage. Um, it's just a good, you know, just a good area. It's got clean flowing water in the back. You can tell that's kinda got, you know, decent water. The water clarity in this photo is really good. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I would look for. Steeper banks, um, I'd stay away from that really flat stuff, you know. Um, I, I like to find those steeper banks and then find like a rock change. That boat ramp right there, that'd be a great place to fish. Cranking this, this rock point, see how it transitions from sand to rock? Um, this is just a, a Google Earth photo from, looks like, what's it say here? Uh, it doesn't say anywhere, but it's, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff I look for. It's protected, it's in the sun all the time. You know, that's, that goes, and that's a place I can go get a bite really quick. You know, if things start to warm up, then I'm gonna start fishing the backside of these docks when fish go to spawning towards the end of March. Um, I like to find the ones that are a little bit uh, uh, harder bottom. You know, that's one thing I always do in Oklahoma. I always poke my rod down and I check the bottom. I wanna see if it's got silt or how hard the bottom is. Cause if you poke your rod down and it's hard, fish can spawn in that. If you poke your rod down and it's soft, it's not gonna be the best water on the lake. Um, a lot of times, you know, in March, we'll get, we'll get some, uh, you know, higher water. And, and I really like fishing this lake when the, when the water gets high. This is one of those creeks that can be really good um, early in the year. Just if, if you want to take your chances and, and run up into that creek, it can be really, really good. Be careful running back through here because that timber can, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a hairy, hairy run running back in there. But that would definitely be one place to start. I'm trying to find a photo here with the water a little bit higher. No, uh, they don't have a good photo. All right, so we're dealt this photo with the water low, which is, I mean, I'd rather have a low photo than a high photo. And let's go down, let's pick one more place to start uh, down here in Porum Landing. This pocket right here, there's lots of neat things about this pocket. Uh, I've got a riprap wall in the back fish moving, fish, you know, migrating towards the back, they're gonna hit that wall. There's gonna be a culvert in that thing somewhere. Well, it's right there, you can see it. Uh, you know, with the water up, that's gonna be a place that, that you can, 
you know, catch a fish coming in and out. You know, anytime the wind's blowing, it's gonna be a place you can catch fish coming in and out. But that's not the main reason I picked this pocket. When you look at this pocket, you see all these isolated rocks back behind these docks? I mean, that is like screams for a bass to pull right up there and spawn next to that rock. Go down the bank, you got some more isolated rocks. You know, they're gonna stage right out here on the end of them, maybe behind that dock. Temperature gets right, the water level gets right, they're gonna spawn right up here on the back side of these docks. It's just a great, great spot. You know, you know this here, like maybe to, 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 to take it to your lake, maybe it would be bushes or maybe it would be a lay down or something like that. But when you have these, these rocks like this behind the docks, I mean, it's just good isolated cover for those fish to spawn on. You know, you can go down through there cranking them uh, if they're not quite spawning or, or maybe to get a reaction bite. But that's two areas to start on Eufaula. Um, two, two of the, you know, and I mentioned three areas for that cleaner water. Let's move to the next lake. Let's do, uh, let's do Rayburn next. I just, man, Rayburn's an awesome lake. It's 114,000 acre lake in East Texas. I would love to know, I was doing a little trivia the other day with Ot Defoe, and I want to ask you guys, I, I, I just think, think, we're getting sidetracked here, but forgive me. I want you to think about all the lakes in the country that are world renowned. And you know, when I think of world renowned lakes, I think of, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, we got Rayburn, we got Toledo Bend, we got Gunnersville, we've got Santee Cooper, um, what other lakes am I forgetting? Falcon, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I am curious, Kentucky Lake, of all the lakes in the country, which lake do you think the most amount of bass has ever been caught since that lake was built? I just, I've always wondered that. I just, Lake Fork, you know, but it's not big. You know, I, I kind of vote Raver. I think just the amount of boats, the, the size, you can fish it year round, but you know, I just forgot about Okeechobee, Okeechobee Toho. They can fish those lakes year round. I don't think Okeechobee gets the pressure Rayburn gets. But I, my question is, which lake in the United States has had the most bass caught by anglers since that lake was built? I, I, I just, I would love to know the answer. I, we won't know that till we go to heaven and ask God, but it's just kind of a pretty neat debate. I mean, there's four, five, six lakes there that I think could be in that debate, and Rayburn, I think, would definitely be one of them. Okay, back to Rayburn. We talk about this all the time on the channel. When you go to a lake, a new lake, and you're looking for a place to go fishing, where to start, I always pick the areas that's got the biggest flats. The reason is that flat's gonna have the most amount of bass. And if you look at Rayburn, and you take the five most popular areas on the lake, what are they? Well, let's start on the east side. You got Needmore Point, you got Buck Bay, you got Farmer's Flats, you got Veach, you got the Black Forest out here, you got Harvey, and you got the canyons. I don't know, that's more than five. What do all those areas have in common? They're all the biggest flats on that lake. I mean, the most amount of, uh, of expanse. So like when you look at my sea map, and you know, I've, I've got this kind of set up for colors for a different lake that I'm fishing, but you see how you've got all this shallow water that runs way out. Basically, there's a very flat pocket, that's Veach. You know, the mouth of Harvey, you've got all this flat water that runs out. The Black Forest, all this flat water. Farmer's Flats, all this flat water. Need more point, flat water. Buck Bay, flat water. You know, flat water that drops off into Creek Channel. So, those are all great areas to start and any one of them you can go spend your whole day in in any one of those areas that we just mentioned um, but that goes you know that little scenario goes for even this lake out here and we'll talk about it next but find those areas that's got the biggest flats because that's going to have the most concentration of fish so if we were to narrow it down a little bit more and what i know about rayburn about what's going on there right now um you know the lake's three and a half foot low, uh, no bushes in the water, not a lot of grass. You know, there's some short grass in, in obscure places, but really the only grass in that lake right now is from Veach, uh, Five Fingers um, down in that section. There's a little bit over in Caney, uh, but you know, from Veach to Five Fingers, that's really where the grass is at. 
So that'd be a great place to start. I mean, Veatch is as good as any one of them gets, um, you know, and if, if, if I was to go there, you know, we started this off about trying to fish for that big bass in a Sealy's tournament. So big bass, they're going to want to have deep water close by that in my mind, in my mind, now this is, you guys can argue with me all you want to argue with me, but in my mind, the biggest fish, the 13 pounders, the 11 pounders, I don't feel like, so this, this photo is fairly low. I don't feel like, let's say you've got 10, 13 pound bass that, that live in Veach and they live out here all summer. There's timber out here, creek channel, suspend out, you know, 20, 30 feet of water out deep. I don't feel like that bass, that big fish, that one that's going to win you that tournament is going to go from right here and swim all the way back here to the very back or all the way back to the back here, all the way back to absolutely fish swim back there. But we're talking about that big one so you can win that tournament. Um, I feel like those biggest fish, they pull right here and spawn. Or they pull like you know I'm not saying that spot I'm saying they don't swim as far I'm gonna I'm saying they they have deep water really close by you know so like for me this is a really big flat I think fish spawn all over this thing you can see all these little humps on this thing um, you've got this drain coming in and if I had a spot to start look at that hump right there that would be a great one because uh, uh, that big fish could be out here. Pull right in here and spawn right on top of that hump or right there on that hump. Um, you know, same thing over here, right on this corner right here. Um, and then the wind protects those fish too. So those fish get less pressure because there's days that's so windy out there you can't fish those fish. So those would be some places that I would start in March, Carolina rig, dragging something, you know, for spawning fish that you can't see out deeper than you can see. Same thing out on this point. That's pretty obvious. Uh, you know, I'm sure lots of people fish it. Uh, let's, let's, let's find one more spot here of where to start uh, for a big fish when that all comes down. And, and there's lots of fishing, like to, to run away from pressure, you know, up, up to Angelina, up to Atoyak. You know, you can catch fish up there, you can catch lots of fish up there. I don't think you're going to catch a, like a double digit fish up there. I think there are a few. Um, but I think you get out of that, that Florida gene for the most part. I think you get up there and like a six, seven, eight pounder is, is your max. Um, you're not going to catch a 10, 12, 11 pounder in that zone. I think you've got to stay, you know, canyons to the dam to catch those biggest fish. You know, I just, that's just my opinion. Um, let's just look at farmer's flats. Another place, you know, especially like April, like, like when it gets a little bit later in the year, uh, the water, you know, down here, these fish spawn a little bit later in the year because you're drawn from such a big body of water. And, uh, you know, I know historically that this pocket right here can be a phenomenal spawning pocket. You know, when that water gets up, that water goes way back in these bushes. Um, but I don't think those monsters, I think those big ones, you know, they, they're going to pull off and take a left and, and spawn right down through here. You know, spawn out off this point or, or spawn right out in, on these humps or or maybe right there in those willow trees in that, that little corner. Those are the things, in my opinion, that, that where I would look, not trying to get a lot of bites, but trying to get that one really big bite for that tournament. So, um, yeah, that's my opinion on where to start. Find those biggest flats. Grass is a great, 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 great factor to always have in the mix. It's also gonna draw the most amount of boats. Um, just because you don't have grass in that area, Focus on those stumps. Focus on maybe a, a rockier patches, harder bottom. You can feel that a lot of time with your Carolina rig, those kinds of things. But those are a couple areas on Rayburn that I would look to uh, if I was going down there in March and, and the first part of April trying to catch a big, big fish to win a big bass tournament. All right, the last lake, Lewis Smith Lake. This lake is crazy, guys. For you guys that don't know about it, it's got over a thousand miles of shoreline yet. I don't think it's 20,000 acres total. Um, tons of creeks and rivers and water coming into this thing. They say one inch of rain here raises the lake one foot. So it just tells you how steep everything is. That happens at our, it would never happen at our house that way. Uh, but a really, really, really neat lake. It's a spotted bass fishery. I don't think there's any smallmouth and, and, and largemouth, mainly spots. I think this also is a lake 
or they got those spots that they took out to California that got so huge. But with all that said, I love the lake because you can run a pattern. And you know, this lake, you know, I, I think they start to spawn at the end of March. I think that's just, you know, middle of March, end of March, first of April. I think that is the main window of when they spawn. And you know, for me, when I look at a lake like this, you know, I've got my C map right here and I've got zero to five set up as red. Then I've got like the purple six to 10 and uh, the next color like uh, 10 to 15. So when I look at that, it really just narrows down where those fish can spawn. So like you can see right here is takeoff, you know, this area up here, the map's loading, so all the contour lines. You know, this area up here can get dirty, the water's high right now, so you've got lots of bushes to, to fish. Just a great neck, great river arm to start, because when you look at this, it's, the, it's got the biggest flats of anywhere on the lake. You know, you can see all this color, flat, flat, flat. Look at all these flats, flat, 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 all down through there, well thus that's, the potential for the most spawning habitat, the most habitat for fish to feed, obviously you're gonna have the most numbers of fish. So this, this creek arm, you know, this side of the lake would be a great place to start. You can see how flat that is back there. Now that's not to say, you know, we talked about these flats. That's not to say the only place those fish will spawn. You know, if you can find like a ledge of rocks or something down these steeper embankments, you know, those fish will spawn there too. Let me, let me get over here to Google Earth. So here, here's just an example of those flats that I'm talking about. The water's fairly low. You know, all this flat stuff is, is a potential for a bass to spawn w when you fill the lake up. You know, in particular, you know, lakes like this is where a shaky head or a mojo rig or a Carolina rig work really, really well because all this is underwater. This photo here, the lake's probably six, seven feet low. Right now it's six feet high. So a boat ramp, you know, we've talked about boat ramps a bunch. You know, this boat ramp right here would be a, a great place for a bass to spawn. You've got, you know, sandy, mucky, then you've got an, an old boat ramp that doesn't even get used, doesn't even connect to the land, would be a great place to start. That's the stuff that I would look for, or that I am looking for as I'm here, you know, in the first week of March. I like to pay attention to a lot what the bottom's made of. You know, sometimes when you run down these lakes, Sometimes it's sand, sometimes it's clay, sometimes it's rock. And a lot of times I feel like those fish are gonna spawn on a certain colored dirt. Uh, when I zoom in on this point right here, uh, I can see that it's really rocky. It's different than everything else. To me, that point would be better than say a point that looks like this color right here. You know, that's gonna be a point. And if we find a photo here with it full, you'll see that that's all underneath the water right there that big point stuck out right there and that's all going to be that six to ten feet of water and this kind of clarity water that's how deep those those spots will spawn now if it's muddy or dirty that all changes they just move up shallower on those same points or move towards the backs of those creeks you know one thing that always plays a factor here in a lake like this is run-ins you know when we got here the first day of practice lots of water was running in the backs of those pockets and man the spots were back there big time so if you get any kind of rain at all don't be scared to run into the, any of the backs of those pockets where you got all that fresh water running in in my mind those fish really key on crawdads when i'm out here you know on these points and those kinds of things I feel like they keep more on shad. So uh, one thing that I really look for at a place like this too, like, you know, if you just take this point for an example here, um, you can see this underwater, how shallow all this is out here. I like to find areas where the deep water is super close to the shallow water. Right here, this little stretch right here, it's deep, really close. To me, that's gonna be a key 50 yard stretch. Um, I really pay attention to that kind of stuff. I, I would not waste my time, you know, fishing all, I, I'm not saying there's fish not down there, and maybe this point's a bad example, but I wanna find stuff like this one right here. You know, whatever depth that I, I feel like those fish are spawning, I've got super deep water, really close to a spawning habitat right there, real close, so that's what I look for. I, I don't wanna find a point where it's real gradual, like this. In a lake like this, I, I don't wanna find a point. I wanna find a point that comes out, it, co it can come out gradual and then have a drop. I don't want this, I want this. They're gonna spawn right here. This 
it's too too much they're not comfortable it's too much water to cover i can't pinpoint where they're going to be remember you want to find something like that in my opinion when you're on a lake like this so those are some areas to start, you know, pick those flatter areas. Uh, find the watercolor that you want here at Smith. You know, if you're comfortable in an off-colored water, find it. You can find that here most of the time. If you're comfortable in clear water, you can find clear water here uh, and you can find everything in between. You know, those windy days, pay attention to the wind blowing in. Any place you can find wind, uh, ripples on the water, Focus your pattern on that too. It really helps that bite when you're in that really clear water or just in any water, especially on a lake like this. One more thing to think about, you know, a lot of times, you know, on lakes, uh, you know, you want to try to find protected water. You know, on a lake like Smith Lake, where the water's really clear, I feel like the biggest spots spawn out on those main lake points. Um, don't be scared, you know, like find those flat points, you know, like this point right here. Um, it, it, it's a main lake point, it's got a, got a couple boat ramps on it, but main lake style points, you know, that's where those fish, those biggest spots spawn. They don't travel a lot all the way to the backs of those creeks to spawn. I'm not saying you can't catch some back there, but I feel like those biggest ones spawn out on those main lake points. So um, I hope some of that stuff helps you guys. It's a where to start. That's the name of the video. I'm trying to give you a couple things to think about of what to look for on your lake. Um, you can use some of these tips, you know, maybe not, a lot of lakes relate to this. You know, this 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 lake here relates a lot to Table Rock. It, it relates a lot to Beaver. It relates a lot to a lot of lakes over here in Alabama and Georgia, you know, these deep, clear lakes. So um, think about some of that stuff and use it on your lake. But leave me a comment. Be a subscriber, guys. We'll go through there randomly next month when we do the Optimus Where to Start. And uh, hopefully it's your turn. I get to, I don't do it to. My camera guy picks you as the next Optima battery winner, but I appreciate you guys following along. Tune in next week. We'll be doing it all over again. Come by Redcrest if you're in the area. It's going on uh, at the end of March, last weekend in March. Hopefully I'm fishing to the end, but if not, I will see you at the expo. Thanks guys for following along.